thanks a lot, Jorge, for the introduction. Uh, I'm Luis. Hello. This is Rui. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. We're also accompanied by our functional log here that's here to help us. Experts in laziness. <laughs> <laughs> So today we're here to talk about functional streams with Kafka, a comparison between Aka streams and FS2. So, starting with Kafka. How many people here know about Kafka, have worked with Kafka? Please raise your okay. Yeah, that's a lot, that's fine. I'm just gonna give a quick introduction. So, at the surface, uh, Kafka works like a published subscriber architecture. You have your publishers, you have your topics, you have your, sus your subscribers. A publisher sends a message to Kafka and uh, to a topic, and that message is broadcast to all subscribers to that topic. Okay, but we have some subtle differences. First of all, our topics are partitioned. So, what does this mean? A topic is composed of n partitions, and it is also composed of an optional key. If you pass a key to Kafka, uh, it works like a distributed hash set. So, let's suppose you have value 0 to 10 for your keys. The first partition would get uh, would handle uh, keys from 0 to 3, the second one from 4 to 7, and so on, so on. If you don't pass a key to Kafka, basically it would work like round robin, first partition gets the, the first message, second mes message to the second partition, and so on, so on, so on. Then we have some differences at the consumer level. So uh, instead of having subscribers, we have consumer groups, which are composed of end consumers. And so once a message is sent to a topic, that message is broadcast to all consumer groups, so they work like subscribers in the old model. Um, and then those end consumers in a group, right here it's basically just one group with three consumers and a topic with three partitions. So ideally you would have uh, one consumer per partition, but that's not really a requirement. You can just have one consumer and handle the parallelism of the partitions yourself. Okay. Another difference you see here is that the messages have some numbers underneath. So what, does, what this means is that basically in a partition, each message is ordered. Um, and so if you look at the topic as a whole, the whole topic is not ordered. If you need that, you basically have to use just one partition with Kafka. If you want to take advantage of parallelism, uh, only inside the partition are those messages ordered. Okay, so uh, Kafka gives us full control over these offsets. So basically you can tell Kafka, okay, I want to start from the beginning and reprocess everything again. You always tell Kafka uh, how much you've processed in each partition as a consumer. And so this leverages Kafka from your standard message queues and it works more, it can work like a storage system. You can have time series here ordered by partition. You can have uh, a number of different applications for Kafka that aren't really uh, used in your standard message queues. Event processing, for instance, yeah. or events persistent in this case. Yeah. Okay, moving on. We could talk about Kafka the whole day. Uh, there's even conferences, whole conferences with three days talking about Kafka. We don't have that much time, unfortunately, so we're going to talk about three main features that work well with streaming libraries, uh, how to read and write from Kafka, how to handle all, all these offsets, so how can you tell Kafka I want to start from the beginning? How do you tell Kafka, okay, I've processed until message number 10 in this partition, etc., etc., etc. And we also talk about parallelism. So how can you handle all those partitions using one or more consumers? First of all, we are Scala developers. Uh, we are used to using Java APIs all the time. It comes with a package, basically. So we looked at the, we were starting to, to, to use Kafka and we looked at the Java API. So I'm gonna show you a simple example. First of all, you have this properties object, you have the addresses of the Kafka servers, your group ID, because your consumer always belongs to a group. And these are the first problems you handle, at least as Scala developers. You already are passing class names and reflection in here instead of working at the compile time. And then, we looked at this, we were okay, this is not too bad, but I don't like it that much, but we moved on. So yeah, we are creating a consumer here with these properties, we subscribe to two topics, and then comes a bit of a nightmare, at least for us, functional developers in Scala. So, I put there a comment saying one thread, basically what this means, if you look at the code for a while, you have that uh, function there from the consumer called pull, and it's blocking. So you wouldn't want to run it in your main thread of your application, you would put it in a separate thread. Okay, so we're already having threads. That's not really what we're used to as Scala developers. And okay, how can we leverage this if we wanted to use 
partitions like the parallelism of Kafka, basically, which is a very important feature when you use Kafka. So basically, you would either launch n threads of this, one for each consumer, or you would just have one consumer and then you'd have to manage one thread per partition in your application. So we looked at this first time we wanted to work with Kafka, we looked at this and we were like, okay, this is not the Scala I was used for too, so what can we do? And this was our first reaction to that, to that same application. And so, basically what we want as Scala developers when we're working with streams of data is we want to use the same operations we're used to. So we want to handle uh, a stream as a possibly infinite set of data. So what alternatives do we have for Scala? There's many, I just want to highlight some. We have experience using Arca Streams and FS2. Arca Streams is a streaming library uh, built on top of the Actor model. FS2 is more of a functional streaming library first uh, that is managed on top of a concurrency, um, so the basic concurrency that you use to work with threads underneath, but you'd never handle threads, which is awesome. Then you have Monix that was referenced here today, and then Kafka Streams, which is basically the newest API from Kafka themselves. It has more of a streaming API than, than the one we just showed. It's still quite recent. You'd still have to work with Java. And then to, today we just found out when, in Raul's talk that we're also going to have Freestyle working in here, which is awesome. But we didn't know about it yet, so we didn't talk about it today. Okay. So from now on, let's take a look at my Photoshop skills. <laughs> I will be defending Arca Streams on your left corner and we will be talking about FS2. We'll be showing some code examples to compare the three uh, features that we spoke about, the read and write, the parallelism, and the offset management. I will be showing examples in Reactive Kafka, which is basically a library uh, built on top of Arca streams to process uh, streams from Kafka. And we will be talking about FS2 Kafka, which is a new library developed by us at e.near, uh, specifically by Hui. Okay, just an introduction to our Arca streams. Uh, an image courtesy of Lightband. Basically, uh, our Arca Streams examples work like a graph. So you have three types, a source, a flow, and a sync. The source is basically the source of all your data. It can be a file, it can be a database, it can be whatever plugin you have for uh, Arca Streams. A flow is all where all your transformations are made. And then we have a sync, which is where you put all your data after it's transformed. So it can be, again, a file, a sync, another Kafka topic, whatever you wish it to be, as long as you have a connector. And now FS2, pressing my word to OK, clean. that's my part. Sorry. Um, FS2. FS2, as Lisa has, has told you before, is more of a functional or type functional programming streaming library. We, you know, it comes from the Scala Z streams project, and as you can uh, guess, it's heavy functional stuff. If you look at its implementation, we have three algebras and every type annotations there, which I pretty much like. Um, so uh, actually, these days, FS2 can work or interrupt with CATS and Scala Z, as, as uh, I'll, I'll tell a bit afterwards. So FS2, as its main, I think its main building block is the stream type. And a stream type means like a stream or a description of a stream computation. And it has two type, type parameters uh, there, as you can see in, on the type. One is the element type, which is A, I think. Uh, and the F one, oh. Oh, oh, sorry, it's the <laughs> uh, um, And the F type, the F type is the, what we call the, the effect, or the effect that your stream will carry or do effectful computation, say, I.O. or any asynchronous things. And that effect could be, say, FS2 task or Scala Z task, or even if someone implements some type classes, it could be Monix task or anything like that. Anything that can do effectful uh, computations in general. Um, so another imp two important you know, uh, types in, in, in FS2 would be the pipe type, in which as you may understand by its name, would be sort of a transformation over the elements of a stream or the stream itself. It could be a map operation or uh, taking some n elements from a stream or even in some advanced cases, merging two streams or whatever. Or whatever stream operation you can, you can think about. Actually, in FS2, 
a pipe type, which is parameterized by f, i, and o, would be just a function from a stream of f i to a stream of f o. So it's just a function that transforms um, streams. Okay? A special type of pipe would be the sync type, which is much like the ACA stream sync is something that you write to, okay? your stream writes to, and actually it computes a, it's a, just a pipe of i or o2 units, and unit means just some effect, and when you pass a sync to a stream, you just get a stream of f units, just means a stream that, you know, uh, do some effects full computation that you don't care about the end uh, result. We'll show you an example, a simple example, much like the one Luis has shown you. Um, you just can construct a stream parameterized with the type task, in this case it would be fs2.task, and it's a stream of integers, you pass one, you map the, with the two stream, and at the end you call the run last method, and the run methods from stream just converts a stream of, in this case, task with, to a task of something. In this case it would be just a task that will return the last element from your stream. And if you want to run, really run your task thing, you would call an unsafe run method because running programs is unsafe, as you can understand in this functional purity beautiful world. Um, so <laughs> let's go for our streams again. Okay, so now we're going to compare how you can, using reactive Kafka and FS2 Kafka, uh, to do just some basic read and write. So we'll configure our producers and consumers and show how you can read and write from Kafka with a simple example. Okay, starting with Aqua Streams. Basically, you say the addresses of your bootstrap servers, your consumer group. No longer you, you pass your class paths, you just create some instances to serialize and deserialize the keys, and, and in this case, the values, we're just gonna use strings for demonstration purposes. We create our producer settings and our consumer settings using this serializers and their serializers. I didn't put here the initialization of the actor system, but it's something you have to do with Aqua Streams. And then uh, just a regular subscription uh, for the topic one. Okay, so here is a small example. Basically, we have a consumer object. That consumer object is able to, cre to create plain sources using the settings and the subscription. And then, just like you would a list you map that same uh, stream and you get, uh, you use a parse tweet function basically. It's just something that we use as an example. We get a message from Kafka, we do a parse tweet, and then using that tweet, we get the retweet count, create a producer record, and run with our plain sync. Basically, consumers and producers are DSLs from uh, the Kafka world, sources and syncs are from the Aka Streams world. So this is a connector from both worlds. Okay, so now FS2. Okay, the configuration part is somehow similar, or very similar, to the one we just showed you for Rack Streams. You put the bootstrap servers, you put the consumer group and stuff like that. There is just some, one or two differences that I want to point out for you. One is you are not, um, explicitly telling the serializers, in, at least in the, my, my library, it just, uh, they are just implicit parameters to the consumer settings uh, constructor. So I find that usually would use always the same uh, serializer or the serializer, so it's weird that you are, have to create instances and stuff like that, so I just create a default serializers object, but you, if you want to import others, you also yeah, Functional can. programming. Yeah, functional rest. programming yeah. and no, no boilerplate. Um, Producer, one quick difference that I'm uh, remembering right now is that 50 milliseconds parameter you can see on the consumer settings. It's a required parameter, and it basically means the poll interval, which is how much time you're polling call, and at the end we have to call poll in Java, but how much time it would be blocked on, on a thread. So if you want to you know, have some more real-time like processing, you would decrease that value. If you want more batch-like, you would increase that value. So just a bit of an explanation. The example of creating the actual, the actual stream is fairly similar. You can pass the, the consumer settings to your producer. Actually, you, along with your string string uh, key and value uh, types, you also pass the task, so which is an effect for, for the F effect for your stream. You call a stream pull stream method. I will tell you about 
that later, and you just call the plain messages, which is, I want just plain Kafka records from on my stream, and you map with the same parse to it, and construct, construct a consumer rec uh, producer record, and you create a sync in the two call. The two call receives a, a sync, it's a method from the stream object, and you create a string from your producer settings and producer in the same way as you to the consumer, in this case, it's a synchronous sync, which means I don't care for if these uh, records are produced with errors or when or whatever, it's just a synchronous call, you send stuff to there and it will be somehow produced to Kafka. Yeah, so we have some differences here. Uh, aside from the implicits that are passed to, this, uh, to, to get the serializers and the deserializers, uh, we basically just are unsafe to run our program. Yeah, well, and again. Yeah. But this example is simple and, and the DSLs are pretty much similar. Uh, very similar. This run method just means oh, so I want yeah. a stream of uh, units, so I don't care for the result, and it will run infinitely, at least if some, nothing happen, bad happens, yeah. it will run infinitely. Okay, so now I'll talk, we'll talk about offset management. So basically, how can you programmatically uh, decide where you want to start consuming from Kafka, how can you tell Kafka you have consumed these messages, and all that kind of stuff. So, in Akka Streams. Uh, uh, this is basically an example of how to do things automatically, so basically, instead of having a plain source and a plain sync, we have a committable source and a committable sync that the DSL gives us. Uh, what this means is that once you, you finish uh, each message, you will inform Kafka automatically that you have processed this message. So if your application crashes in, in the middle of the run, you will start from the last message that you've informed Kafka that you've processed. Another way you could do this is using configuration. Uh, Kafka also has a configuration value that you can set, but basically it works like a time interval. So you can say, okay, please assume my messages are committed from five milliseconds to five milliseconds or whatever you want to use. The difference is that if you use the settings, it will get uh, at most once delivery semantics. Something so like, something before you're yes, even yes. processing your messages, you're basically, uh, Kafka already assumes that you've already processed them. With this, you're getting at least once delivery semantics. At the end of your processing, you tell Kafka that you've consumed that message. And so you may receive a message more than once if you crash at the middle of the processing, but uh, it's basically the only difference from the two. Another way you could do it is using an external offset storage. So basically, let's suppose that you wanted to get um, an exactly once delivery semantics and you had this awesome database to do it. Uh, you could have, the, in this case, we just have an offset database that is mocked, but basic, it has two basic operations, load and save. Uh, we create our source from a future because our database is asynchronous. And then we have that operation flat map concat. Flat map concat is to list a flat map, basically. So it, it, it is the same operation, but it is for a source. So inside, we have to pass a function from, in this case, long, which is our offset, to another source. So it works like a simple flat map for sources. Uh, in this case, we're also showing that we get our offset from the database. And in here, you have a difference where you assign a subscription with an offset. We're putting the partition zero here because it's just for demonstration purposes, but the offset part is passed in here. Um, you then create your committable source from that subscription that you just passed the offset to, and it works just like the same. The difference is that we do a map async because we're calling an asynchronous database to save our offsets. Okay, um, now FS2. So the first example is quite similar. We'll be having some different ones. Um, so, I think the main difference here is that instead of calling the plain messages thing in, on your simple stream, you call the committable messages uh, stream methods, and this means that you, instead of having some plain Kafka records, you get some objects that are wrapping Kafka messages, but have some methods and uh, utilities to get to commit or and get the offsets and all the offset re uh, management related stuff, and you actually. When we, when we parse this message and process this message, this committable message as a map, so in the line you see the map map, actually doing libraries we can put map methods wherever we want, so it's better here. Um, and then when we produce the record, we do use a, an object which is a producer message that contains a producer record and some carry 
some path through objects, and that in this case would be just the commit offset that the send committable producer sync just knows that after the producer record is uh, written to Kafka, is acknowledged, it knows that it should commit the, um, the committable path through object that is passed around with. So this committable sync no, has yes, some type level restriction, so the path through object should be a committable thing in this case. The um, of external offset management uh, example is uses a real flat map thing, not map, map on cut. So if I wanted, I could use for syntax here, which is I like. Moreover, you use this stream.eval construct, which means that you are constructing a stream of a single stream element from an effect, which could be anything, not just a future, like in like streams. I'm just being a bit picky, a bit picky here. Um, and we flat map, and then in the flat map function, you construct the actual uh, consumer stream. You use manual assignment to to load your offset coming from the, the database that load uh, function, and you do exactly basically the same uh, thing that uh, Yaka streams uh, stream did. Uh, there's some yeah. small differences here. Uh, I think the fact that FS2 is more generic in the effect, it's better because I could change it without changing almost any color. Okay, there is a task there. Yeah, it would be easy to, to, to change, but I like more FS2, but it's, I'm just being <laughs> it's picky. Just I'm just, picky. Yeah. yeah, aside from the being more generic in FS2, uh, I would say, if you didn't notice that, basically, when you use the committable messages in this example or the committable source, you're doing that because you want information about these offsets, okay? Aside from the, the, the syntax differences, uh, I think FS2 is a bit closer to the functional programming world. Again. There is a, another thing I would like to point out that I forgot. Look, for instance, that database.save method in this case would be just saving an offset, but in, I think in the real world we you would just yeah. send something else with it, like, for instance, an order or anything that you would like to save transactionally in a database along with the offset. So you can have an, sort of an atomic operation like saving the offset and saving your processing results there. I'm not sure if uh, Kafka already released the new version, but there's a version coming or recently released that will have transactional mm -hmm. semantics for Some delivering things. messages. Yes, I think so. So right now we don't have it, so we have to rely on external storages. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to talk about parallelism. So how can you effectively work with all these partitions? We're just going to use a single consumer and our stream will handle the parallelization of all these partitions in a local process, so with the single consumer. In ACA streams, the difference now is that instead of a plain source, we get a committable partition source. So it has information about the, the offsets and it, all, it is also partitioned. And here comes a big difference. So instead of having to work with a single source, we now receive for each partition in our uh, Kafka topic, we get a message with a topic partition representing the partition with which that source that is on the, the other side of the tuple is related to. So then with that source, we can map to whatever logic we want. I just put there a logic flow, which basically represents a set of transformations that you'd like to do with the data. And then we create again uh, our Kafka message. And by using a committable partition sync, we're basically automatically saying Kafka, we've processed this message for this partition. Finally, you have that map async unordered. Basically what this means is that if you launched another uh, consumer, uh, Kafka would automatically distribute your partitions. So you would lose one of these sources, it would end, and you would uh, asynchronously, you don't care about the order, so you would asynchronously uh, close all your resources gracefully. Okay, so now about FS2. Okay, this time the example is a bit different, just for being not that boring. Um, what we want to do this, you know, with this example would be a parallel uh, count, and this parallel count function would receive a key function which would compute a sort of a key from your records, and actually it receive a, a signal which is an FS2 sort of variable that we can store uh, things there and can some goodies like a dis discrete stream of changes from there. But in this case, I will just use it as a, a variable that can be checked externally. This function would 
leverage the parallelism from Kafka because I would we would like to process. Uh, imagine that the key function would be an, an expensive computation, and you would gain stuff, or at least performance-wise stuff, by processing it in parallel. So our consumer stream as is uh, some, just a bit different. Instead of calling the simple stream method, we will call a partition stream. And what this means is that instead of re having a stream of Kafka records, you would have a stream of topic partition and streams, of tuples and of, of topic partition and streams, like the example that Luis has shown you for ACA streams. And then to process the streams, we you just do, do an eval map on each uh, inner stream, having the, that key function. Eval map is sort of a map, but the function that you use returns an effect. So it could be even an asynchronous computation or some, some effectful thing there. But you still have, you are, we are ignoring here the public partition, of course, but you still have a stream of streams. You have to somehow, somehow flatten these constructs. And then you, for that, use uh, an FS2 nice function, which is fs2.concurrent.join, which runs a stream of streams concurrently. So at the end, we would have a common stream of uh, records. In this case, you have a stream of strings, because our key function computes strings from the records. And then after joining, the, the your, your, your streams do a scan. And a scan, for those who don't know it, it's like a fold operation. But instead of just returning a value, at the end would return the updated state each time a new you know, value comes to, to the stream. We just have a map here that has keys to counts, and we are using that uh, monoid addition syntax thing from cards to uh, add the new uh, element, which is a map of the key we have to end one. So you have you just said map monoid thing, and it's, it's cool. And then you, each time this scan operation runs, you would update your signal, and this signal could be consulted externally, say, an ATP server or anything you want. So you, could be, you, you use it as a variable of some, some sort, okay? Just for an example, and to be a bit different from the, the other examples. So, um, okay, this is all pretty good, we show, we've shown you examples of parallelism and com comparison and offset management and read and write and configuration and compares ACA streams and FS2. For ACA streams, actually, I think this sort of DSL of streaming like DSL com uh, consuming from a queue and producing to you know, some other queue or some other topic would be the same thing in other message queue systems. It, so of course, it's up to differences, but if you want to leverage parallelism in, or in partitions, it would be something like that. If you want to leverage offset management, it would be something like that, or acknowledgments, or something like that. For, for Kafka, in ACA streams, we have reactive Kafka from Software Mill, which is a pretty stable library, as you can check out. But for FS2, we didn't have. We use that at, at near FS2 with Kafka, but it's just wrapping some parts of the Java API, which time we, we need it. But I think, and I thought at the time that it would be useful to have a more clean and uh, you know, library for that and reusable library for, for that. So I developed fs2.kafka. You can check it on GitHub. We'll tell you the link at the end. But to develop that, I had to overcome some challenges, I think, which would be you know, how to create a type-safe API from the Java API. Um, how to handle back pressure, for instance, how to handle some state management that's needed, and resource acquisition and disposal and all the other stuff. Starting with the type safe parts. It's the hard part for me to explain. <laughs> um, for, for, at, first of all, well, we'll show you the, our consumer trait, which is the entry you know, traits, and along with its companion object, of course, to the consumer, which is parameterized by the effect, and key and value types. This consumer has the simple stream and partition stream stream types, and the stream type is also uh, inner traits. Okay, and these traits are had a had a type member which simply means the kind of stream that we, it will output. With this, you can generalize a lot some things that I I, I will show you. Please show me the abstract stream type thing. 
For instance, in the case of a simple stream, you, as you can see, the out stream type as a whole there, which A, the A would be just a consumer record, but with a stream of streams, partition stream thing would be just a topic partition and stream. And that make stream method is just the, you know, the happy part, which cons constructs this partition streams or simple stream. And if you look at this, its signature, you have a message builder. And the message builder takes care of creating messages, not the output stream type, but messages, for instance, plain messages, which is the identity thing. But for the committable messages, that message builder knows how to create a committable message from a plain Kafka record. Actually, I found this sort of design nice because you can leverage, say, dependent <laughs> typing to express your, uh, your signatures and your return types. Probably the compiler could infer much of it, but I think it helped me a lot. You know, Scala features, some specific Scala features like dependent typing and traits helped me a lot in, with this design. As you can see, the committable messages uh, method just calls MakeStream with a committable message builder, which is an object that returns as a pipe to construct committable messages. The, pro the producer is very much simpler, it just, okay, has a lot of methods more methods, of course, but the, the send one, the send method is a pipe which produces to Kafka and returns uh, that P uh, thing that you can process downstream if you need. In the case of a send committable, of course, it would be just a committable message and it will be, be committed. Automatically, the send async is just a sync that you saw on, on the beginning. It's, it's simpler. Just syncs and pipes, basically. Uh, research acquisition. Why I'm, I'm talking about resource acquisition, acquisition here, because when you are constructing a stream, you're not actually running things. You are just describing how to run a stream-like computation. And you have to decide where your resources are acquired. For In this case, for instance, a Kafka consumer. But then you have to know where, or at least know how to dispose of them. And FS2 has this nice function with this bracket. And the f first uh, argument would be is a, is a effect to create a, your new resource. In this case, it would be a Kafka consumer. Second one would be a function that, using that consumer, creates a stream. And the second one would be the disposal thing. In this case, the underscore means the same consumer we created and just called close. Why this? Why, why this is important? Uh, it's this close method would be called any any way anything. Sorry, anything can happen, but this is sort of a final, sort of a finalizer thing. If your stream ends with an error, this clause will be called. If your stream finalized by normally, for some reason, this thing will be called, and you, have, you don't have to, you know, care about when it will be called. So FS2 handles it. It's just a sort of a final uh, block in a try catch block, something like that. But FS2 takes care of it. So, so I think this this part is pretty. Is needed, right? State management. <laughs> I usually, in the sound of functional programming thing, you would use normally state methods or whatever. But there is a case I found which were which was doing this though that partition stream thing, and I really had to store in a mutable reference what partitions were open and. Partitions can be open like the Kafka cluster tells you, you now, your consumer now consumes these, sort, these partitions, or in the manual assignment that we've shown you with the offsets, it's just assume that you, this partition will be open. But when you receive a message from your consumer, you have to this to sort of a route or demultiplex uh, the, that message to your inner streams, and I really have to have a mutable variable or in, in concurrent mutable variable to have uh, those things. And FS2 has this ref thing, which is a mutable variable, but has many functional operations for modifying and getting and setting an effectful thing. So I, I really had to use that thing. And the values for that map it are queues, and this, those queues are just the things that that inner streams, that partition inner streams are uh, the queuing things from. So each time a new message comes, I just put message on the 
specifically for the partition. There is some interesting type signature there, which is an option and chunk and stuff like that. The option just means that when you, your partition is revoked, you just pass it on to the queue and the inner stream consumer just knows, okay, the stream has ended. So. Um, there is also the open partitions queue, which just the queue that you put the streams that are open, say. There's topic partition tuple slash stream thing. Yeah. When a new partition opens, yes, yes, basically yes. this is called and it's passed into that map. Yeah. yeah. And a new, it basically signals that a new it's partition It's a bit hard to explain, opened. and the code is very big. We can show it here. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, it's on GitHub, we'll tell you. Yeah. We'll and the last thing is back pressure. <laughs> back pressure. Okay, I don't know much. Okay, I know a bit about back pressure, but in this case, FS2 is a pool-based stream model, which means your downstream phases just tell the upstream, I need something, I need more elements. Okay, there's, Alka Streams is, is, is a push-pull model where upstreams can tell, I want to send you, but in this case, it's just pool-based model. It's easier to reason about back pressure because it just tell, okay, give me. And, but there is a small issue. For instance, in this example of partition streams, you have an input and various outputs. And having a pool-based model here is challenging. I had to invert it with queues, but I'm still a bit skeptical about performance here. And if anyone has a really good idea, I would like to hear it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, okay, it's just for this picture that we put back pressure here. <laughs> I admit, I admit, I admit. And then, Okay, uh, finally, this is all the materials that we use to build this presentation. I want to obviously give special emphasis to the first one on the FS2 part, which is the, the GitHub link for the library that Rui built at d.near. Actually, it, it is also published on my Bintray repo. You can find it on the readme. I forgot to okay. here. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we want, this is open source. We but really would. Please. Yeah, help please us. help us, basically. Yeah, contribute to us because. Um, especially this concurrency part. I know yeah. there's obviously a lot of people who are more experienced in this. So please help us, give us your ideas. We're going to be at the party, so it's always a good time to, <laughs> to chat about this. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, before questions, I would just like to say, it's a bit hard to put this down in words, but I would just like to say for 47 and Ed.Near, my employer, and all of you guys, uh, thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks.